for some great things coming out of this man of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Clap and praise for him. Praise God. Praise God. It is an honor and a privilege to be before y'all today. And before I get started, I'm going to pray. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for this opportunity that we come to pause in your presence, to fellowship around your word. Anything that is said, let it minister to the hearts and bring forth change, Lord God. Yeah. And I just decrease, Lord God, as you increase, Lord God. Let them not see me, but let them see you, Lord God. And I just thank you for change in all the lives, and I just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God has been dealing with me for quite a while. And the way the uh, message came about, you know, I went through a lot of different stuff, you know, months ago. And recently, just started getting back into listening to praise music. Just praising him on my route. And I stumbled across this one song that touched my heart every time I hear it. It's uh, it's by Jonathan McReynolds. It might, it might be, you know, familiar. It's called Cycles. And when I first started hearing the song, I was like, "Wow, Cycles!" And there was a part in the verse where he said, "The devil learns from your mistakes, even if you don't. Even if you don't." Then I the the hook was just simple. It got me going in cycles. Cycles, cycles, cycles. And, and I just began to repeat that. Cycles, cycles. We all go in different forms of cycles. And we don't realize it. We have these bondages that's on us and it keeps us going. You ever think about a hamster wheel, right? You ever seen a hamster running in that wheel? He can't get out of there. The only way he can get up out of that hamster wheel and let somebody let him out. Somebody's got to reach down in there and pull him out of that hamster wheel or he just gonna keep on running and getting nowhere. Sometimes in life, we think that we're going somewhere, but all we're doing is just running a 360. We're just running and running and running. See, I'm, <laughs> I was born in, you know, the 80s where I looked at cartoons like Sonic the Hedgehog. I know that like Sonic the Hedgehog, when he run, it was just a straight circle. But if he didn't go nowhere, it was just gonna be a straight circle and he's just standing there. That's how it is sometimes when we're going through cycles. And it, can be, and it can be stuff that we deal with for months, years, and I mean even going on to like decades of the same old cycle. I'm gonna begin this with, um, most of the times when we go through cycles, these are there's, there's four different cycles. And I just want to sum them all up because if I touch each and every one of them, we'll be in here for like three hours. So <laughs> God just told me to break it down. Number one, the cycle of codependency. Most of the times when you hear codependency, you think of drugs, you think of people that's alcohol abuse, you think of all kinds of negative stuff. But the Lord put on my heart that this cycle of codependency is with people. It's with people. Sometimes we can be so dependent on that person that we don't even turn to God. We don't turn to him at all. We'll go to that person and ask him for all the advice. That person just be like, okay, God, go, go, go to God and pray with him. I'm going to give you the advice that God gives me, but you got to ultimately go to him. But you keep on going back to that person. The first scripture out of Exodus 20 and 3. Exodus 20 and 3. This is the first commandment. Thou shalt not have 
no other gods before me. That is the first commandment. No other gods. Sometimes in life, we can put that person over God and look at that person as God. It's like you, it's just like you have that replacement God because that person is connected to you all the time. For instance, I'm coming to, I'm coming to Pastor Harris. I'm saying, Pastor Harris, I'm, I'm going through some trouble right now. I got a lot of issues. We praying together. He giving me the godly advice. He telling me what to do, but he's like, ultimately, you got to start doing this on your own. You got to do this on your own. You got to be able to go to God. But each and every time, I'm ignoring that part. Because I want to be around him so much. I want to keep the cycle going. I want to just keep on saying, you know what, Pastor Harris, I'm, I'm calling him, I'm calling him, I'm calling him. It's just like a person that's addicted to drugs. Sometimes we can get addicted to people in that way. We can get addicted to what we call them, all kinds of you know, all throughout the night, all throughout the day, pray for me. Can you help me? But he's like, go to God. And my, and then in my mind, my relationship won't be with God. It will be with Pastor Harris. That's it. There's, there's just this connection, but no connection between them because all he is is just a messenger. Just like I am. I'm just the messenger. You don't look at me as God. I can give you the advice. I can give you the things that God's telling me what to do, but ultimately it points right back to God because God is the source that's using me to help the other person out. Codependency. The cycle of codependency. Sometimes it can get toxic. Yeah. You ever been just talking with a person so long about the same issue and you wonder why they start avoiding you. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. I've done it before. That's what I can talk about. I've, I've, I've bugged somebody so much. I'm going to be real with you. I bugged them to death. I bugged them about the same situation. Can you help me? Can you pray for me? Can you give me some advice on this? I mean, it was just like I was addicted to having that person on the phone. I was addicted to having that person around me. Coming to the house all the time for the same old situation. And then I realized that I was killing myself and also breaking up that friendship. Because that person is going to say in their mind, well, what am I telling you for and you're not going to God yourself? What, what's the point of me exalting my energy, messing up my time, taking up my time to help you and you don't want to do right? That is the cycle of codependency when it comes to people. I'm not saying that it's wrong to be around people and to get godly advice, but ultimately, you got to be able to do it on your own. It's just like training a kid to ride a bike. You got to be, like, you tell them, okay, you pedal, you pedal, and then once they, you start moving, you start going, then they let you go. Sometimes you got to be able to let go. Here's another example, just like when a baby eagle is being trained to fly. What that mama gonna do? The mama is just gonna put, they're gonna tell the bird how to fly, and it's, it's already in them as well. Because the eagle, whatever is in you, is gonna come out <laughs> once you have a little pressure. But sometimes you need a little push. And that's exactly what the mama eagle does. She pushes him off the cliff and he has no choice but to start flapping his wings. And then after he starts flapping his wings, he will be able to what? Soar. That's how you get rid of that codependency with people. You gotta be able to listen to the advice, apply the advice, and then be able to soar. But sometimes, I'm gonna be real with you, we get in our mind that God is not working fast enough for me. 
He's not working fast enough. I need, I need something, I need something real quick. I need me a, a real quick fix. I, I, I need that. I don't really trust his timing. I know what you're saying is good. I'm taking the advice, but he, he's not fast enough for me. And that causes a lot of toxic relationships. Now let me flip the script. Sometimes we can do that when it comes to being with a significant other or spouse. Like you wonder why this lady over here that is unequally yoked to this man over here, wonder why she keep going back to him. It's called a soul tie. She's so dependent on that person. She has so many insecurities in herself to where she does not feel loved. Codependency. When she don't feel loved, she's gonna go right back to the person that said, I love you. The one that said, I can, I can do all of these things for you. And then, as soon as he traps her in there, he like, gotcha. And then, it's like another cycle. That's why, and it happened, it's vice versa as well. It's, you know, man, woman, and also, woman and man. But the point is that we have to break that cycle of being so codependent on people and not being dependent on God. Codependency. You gotta break that cycle. Cause, because it's dangerous. You know what the scripture says, thou shalt not have no other gods before me? God is a jealous God. And if he sees that you are so codependent on someone else, guess what? He's going to sever that. And once he does, you're going to be alone where you have no choice but to depend on God. But the flip side is some, some people, the reason the cycle goes on so long, because if that tide is severed, guess what you're going to do? You're going to search high and low for that person that's going to help you out. I'm gonna give a uh, shout out to the group. group. I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm blabbing right now. Grief uh, group, Mildred and Lady, they're over here. They helped me through the process. And just to give an example, if I was going to the grief share all the time and listening to everything, but not applying it, I wouldn't be up here to this day. I'd be sitting over there wishing depressed, stressed, and all of that different stuff. So if I, I was so cold, if I was so cold dependent on just going all the time and then calling them all the time, oh, I, I just need prayer for the same situation. And they telling me God can help you in that situation. But if I wasn't applying that, I wouldn't be standing up here right now. It is by God's power. It's about God's might that's able to heal us inside. And he is the only source that can do that. We gotta break that cycle of co-dependency. Number two, the cycle of wrong thinking. The cycle of wrong thinking. Yo, uh, any, any domino players in here? In, oh, we got, got a couple of domino players. You know what it is like, when you're looking at your hand, and it's, <laughs> And, it's, and you thinking, okay, you know what? I'm gonna try to strategize. But the person across from you, you taking, you taking a little long. They gonna, they, what are they gonna tell you? You think long, you think wrong. Sometimes in life, we go through that cycle of code, I mean not codependency, of wrong thinking. We're thinking so long about the situation. It's called the will. Another, another term we call ruminate. You're thinking about the situation so long to where you do something crazy. It's called premeditating. Just like, just like Minister Wise was talking about on the highways, and like how you will cut somebody out. Sometimes we can wake up on the wrong side of the bed and we have in our mind, if anybody cut me off on this road, I'm letting them have it. That's how it is. It's called premeditating. 
you, you might have had a nightmare, you might have had a bad day, and you went to sleep with some of that stuff on your mind, and you know, quote unquote, woke, on a, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and you have in your mind, if the boss say something wrong to me, if somebody cut me off on the freeway, if my kids is acting up today, I'm about to let them have it. I'm about to go from angel to devil level in 2.5 seconds. I'm gonna let them have it. And that's what's, that's what's called dwelling. That's a cycle of wrong thinking. How many of us is going through that right now? We got that wrong thinking going on. We dwelling, we just let it meditate. And then we do something crazy. Proverbs 23 and seven. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Let me focus on that. Let me focus on that first part. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Wow. You gotta be careful of what you're thinking. Because if you think long, you think wrong. Somebody if for instance, if somebody told you that you was dumb, that you was stupid, that you want to amount to nothing, that you was rejected, don't nobody care about you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to dwell on it. You're going to dwell on it in your head, and guess what? You're going to start speaking it. Because once it gets, once you hear it or you see it, it's going to get into your head and also get into your Heart, where it said he thinketh in his heart. So when he thinks those negative things in your heart, guess what? You gonna speak it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So your day is made on what you speak. If a person says that I'm dumb and I'm stupid, and you start to begin to say that stuff out of your mouth, guess what? You're going to feel that way. You're going to feel insecure about yourself. You're going to feel that nobody wants me. You're going to feel that I can't do nothing right in life. You're going to feel those things in you. And it's all negative. And it is a cycle. Why do you think that so many people are on depression medicine? They got to take all of these medications just for them to calm down because they felt so insecure about themselves just because somebody said you don't look good or you stupid or you dumb or your, your daddy didn't want you so you can't amount to nothing or if your dad has done something negative and like you just gonna be just like your dad if anybody said those different things that's why a lot of people are taking these medications and these pills just to calm themselves down from getting anxiety or getting overwhelmed off of the negative things that somebody said. Wrong thinking. And see, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to break, but it's not impossible. It might be hard, but it's not impossible. You know, because we have the power to renew our mind. We have the power to fight against that wrong thinking. We just gotta know how. In God's instructions in his word shows us how. His word shows us how. And I know I've said this before that there's Bibles everywhere. You can get a Bible at the dollar store, you can get a Bible at the Dollar Tree for five to ten dollars. If you just come to a church, you might find if you just walk in there just to visit, and you be like, I don't have a Bible. They would give you a Bible. If you have a smartphone, which three fourths of everybody has one, you can download a Bible app. There's no excuse for putting those those that life back into your system, but you gotta want it. You gotta want it. See, that's why number one and number two goes goes together because when you're co so codependent on someone and not codependent on God, you're gonna go into that wrong thinking. 
But once you start to allow God to move in your life, your mindset will change. Then you'll be able to have the right thinking. And you will say, by any means necessary, I'm going to get up out of this by renewing my mind. And the only way I can renew my mind is unless I get into his word. It's just like Hebrews he, the, uh, Hebrews 4 where it talks about the word of God is alive sharp, quick and quicker sharpening any double-edged sword piercing in the body, the soul, and the spirit and the bone and the marrow so his word is that powerful, we just gotta apply it and this is how you break the cycle Philippians 4 and 18 Philippians 4 and 18. This is how you break the cycle. But I have all in abound. I am full, having received. And I don't know how to say that word. I'm going to just be real with you. The things which were sent from you and endure of the sweet smell and sacrifice accepted well pleasing to God. I'm gonna read it out of this other version. It was actually four and eight. My bad. Cause I was looking at it like, wow. It's actually four and eight. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Mm. He gave you the strategy to think on those things. If you are going in a cycle of wrong thinking, just think of true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. And you will have virtue. He said, think on these things. Think on it. You might be going through a lot of trouble in school. School is a little hard. I'm in college myself. The, the assignments can be very difficult. Now, if I just think about all the bad reports, if I just think about, well, I might have messed up on this assignment before, so I might just get an F. Well, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to end up getting an F because I thought on these things. But if I start thinking about what's true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report, I will be able to pass those classes. Or in other words, I will be able to pass those tests and ultimately get out of that cycle of wrong thinking. Now, the, <laughs> now God was really dealing with me on this one. He just gave this to me yesterday. I was preparing the message. I mean, I prepared the message a few days ago, and God dropped this in my spirit. The cycle of comparison. The cycle of comparison. We're living in an age now where everything is on social media. Everything, you know, for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Those are like, you know, the top three. Then you got like Snapchat where everybody's doing like, you know, a few second videos and that sort. So everything is watch everything is viewable because see back back in the day since we didn't have all of that you had to see that person and you had to see them in person or you know hear about it you know how they're doing good and how they're flossing now since we have all of these social media platforms we can see it and most of the times we're on facebook we can uh, get a little discouraged. I would just be real with you. We can get a little discouraged. We can see those, those friends of ours. They're doing good. After making hundreds of thousands, millions, whatever. They, they driving fancy cars. 
They got they got this nice house, like cause everything is postable. Every they will post everything. They'll be like, you know what? I'm, look at this, look at this gourmet dinner right here. And you be like, man, I, I wish I could have something like that. Man, you know what? I got my credit straight and I just bought me a house. Look at me balling. Then in your mind, you's like, man, I wish I could have something like that. Then that's thing you know, they driving something brand new and they posting it all the time. You know, they're posting when they buy it right at the lot with the tag on it. They be like, you know what? I just thought I just dropped a hundred racks on her. It was nothing. I just dropped all that on there. And then you look at it. Oh man, I, I wish I had that. You start looking at their house, their finances, and their car, and you start looking at what you have, and you tend to get discouraged. That is a cycle of comparison. We try to compare ourselves with each other, like it's some kind of competition. Yeah. Most of us, we, I mean, we, we seem like we're in so much competition that we do stuff on purpose just to make the other person feel low and down. It's called stunt. <laughs> now we stun on each other. I'm just keep it real, this is like in 2019. We stun on each other. They said in the rap songs, they said on videos. Man, if you ain't nothing, you ain't nothing if you got this. And if you in my face and I got this, I'ma stun on you. But if you think about it, it's a stunt. Most of the times, those rappers don't really have it like that. Because if they're blowing it like that, if they don't manage it right, they're going to end up in debt. You see how many people that has gone in bankruptcy because of the word stun, because of buying everything that somebody else won't? It's just like me saying, I look at 50 Cent's house and I want to go and uh, get all of that. <laughs> but I'm just working at the post office and only making this amount of money, but I'm gonna go and get that. But I'm gonna put myself in debt because I want to look just like that. I want to compare myself to the, you know, to 50 Cent. I'm just, you know, using him as an example. I want to be able to do something like that. But in uh, that, Mindset running in that cycle of comparison, I lose my identity. How many people loses their identity because of the cycle of comparison? They lose their identity. They they look at their person on TV or Instagram, Facebook, social media, and they start dressing like them. I would be real. Um, I don't know who the rapper was, but they start putting you know the red thing on top of their hair and all that. And see, I, I carry mail. I start seeing kids everywhere with the little red thing on the top, just at the front right there. It's just red. I'm like, okay, so they follow me a tree. <laughs> yeah, a tree. That's what, that's what it is. You, you're following a trend. But sometimes when you're following that trend, you can lose your identity trying to be like somebody else. You compare yourself to the other person. You can lose your identity and you will mess around and, and look at the artist and say, oh, I'm gonna I'm be just like him. I'm gonna be just like her. And in those situations, God is trying to help you, but you're so focused on trying to be like Cardi B. You're so focused on trying to be like it says Jay Z, Beyonce. You're trying to you're trying to focus on being like them, or even just people on Instagram, or even just people that you know, and then that turns into envy because of the cycle of comparison. Everybody has done that one one or two times in life, probably more. I've done that. I mean, literally. I can't remember the person's name, but I wanted to be just like that person. I started dressing like them. I, I forgot what the name was, but um, you know, in Dallas, the hood that I grew up in was all Crips. So I'm, I'm rocking blue all the time. And my dad taught me better. What do I need to be worn around with sagging pants and stuff? What do I need to do that for? I didn't look right doing it anyway. So growing <laughs> 
like in the 90s and the early 2000s, that's when the grills came out. So I ain't have no money to get no real grill, so I started stunning. Got some aluminum foil and put it in my mouth. You know, and then start, you know, Big T was all over there in, you know, in Dallas. You go up there and get one of them little grills that you snap in. Then you be walking around like this. Just grilled out. I'm, I'm doing all this. I'm, I'm slanging. I'm cussing. Then I start ultimately selling weed like them. Because I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be like them so bad. But I lost my identity. I lost for years. I didn't even know who I was. You know how many names? How many nicknames I went through? Because I'm trying to find out who I am. I started off as little D because I'm short. Then I gained a lot of weight, so I was big D. Then I started going by Mr. D because I wanted to be the man. You know, I want to be a boss. You know what I'm saying? I'm Mr. D. Then next thing you know, God is like, you can try all of those different names, but ultimately you're Derek. That's the name that I gave you. And even, I'm a, I'm a gospel hip hop artist and a DJ as well. I go by DLS. That is my initials to my name, but it's got a deeper meaning. Destiny, love, and salvation. I was destined by God's love, which is giving me salvation. That is the new name that he gave me because I broke out of that cycle of comparison of DLS. And he also called me to be a gifted ruler. That's how you break the cycle of comparison. Let God show you your identity. Let him show you who you are. Look in the mirror at yourself. That's your identity. Because God has made you. He made man in his image and his likeness. If somebody come and tell you, are oh, you ugly or something like that, you're like, no, because I was made by God. And God is not ugly. I was made in his image and his likeness. And he is not ugly. So I am beautiful. <laughs> Romans 8 and 6. Romans 8 and 6. For the carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When we are in that cycle of comparison, we have a carnal mind because we don't think that we're good enough the way God made us. But once we are spiritually minded, we have life and peace. Last but not least, the cycle, the cycle, the cycle of unresolved issues. The cycle of unresolved issues. Most of the time, in life, we're so codependent on that person, we end up having the wrong thinking. We compare ourselves to other people and we end up having these unresolved issues. We might have been bullied, we might have been abused, we might have been talked about. We never went back to forgive that person or to say that, you know what, you, you hurt me, but I forgive you. And we go through life with that big weight on our shoulders. It's weighing us down each and every day. That's why a lot of relationships don't work. You know, you, you heard the term, hurt people hurt people. Sometimes when you're hurt, all you want to do is hurt that other person. You want to be able to belittle them. You want to be able to let them feel how you feel. Even though this is a different person, this is a different relationship, this is a different friendship, but since you've been hurt by so many people, if somebody even looks like that person, or even acts like that person, or has any, you know, that's, that's like that person that hurts you, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna be defensive. 
You're going to be very defensive. It's unresolved. God wants us to live in peace and harmony with each other. He don't want us to be going around holding those things in. Sometimes we make a lot of mistakes in life. And that, and that can cause unresolved issues. That can cause us to, to dwell on it so much. You might have did something bad in your past. But I'm going to let you know this. Your purpose trumps your mistakes. Your purpose trumps your mistakes. There's a reason God allowed you to go through that in the first place. There's a reason that he allowed you to... Do what you did, rob somebody, even shot at somebody, or steal from somebody. He allowed you to do that. And most of us cannot, you know, put our finger on it why he allowed us to go through that. When you choose the wrong path, God allows you to go down that, but the purpose that he has for you is greater than the mistakes that you made. The cycle of unresolved issues. Sometimes when you're trying to resolve those unresolved issues on your own, it's just like having a stop, stopped up nose. You're congested. You're trying to breathe through your nose, but you can't because it's unresolved. You got to be able to get that congestion out of your system. And that congestion is clogging up your spirit. And the only thing that's in your body now is all things carnal and negative. That's what happens when you try to hold on to those unresolved issues. And in order to break that, you gotta forget. You know the term y'all we always say, let go and let God. But do we really do that? I mean, it's a lot of stuff that go through my mind all the time, and I gotta, you know train myself not to keep thinking those things because if I dwell on it so long, it's going to cause me to have, you know, to feel negative, to be negative. Like I can be going through something just like I uh, talked about earlier. I can have something that happened right before I go to sleep, have a bad nightmare about it, wake up on the wrong side of the bed, and in my mind, I'm thinking about going off on the bus before I even get to work, or before I even get up out of the bed. If somebody say something to me wrong, I'm gonna go off on them. That is a unresolved issue that I have that, that had hit me the night before. See, when I think, when I take a, talk about unresolved issues, I mean on every aspect. You might have had, you, you might be working in retail or something like that, and you had a customer call up there and you're on the phone with you, you're just being polite. You're just being good, but then they're just being so negative towards you, which caused you to be negative, and you have this issue inside of you, and you're just angry for the rest of the day. And if you don't resolve it, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go to home, you're gonna go home, you're gonna get in front of your spouse, your significant other, or your kids, or anything like that, and you wanna go off on them, and they're gonna, they gonna be looking at you like, what did I do? It's an unresolved issue, and it's a cycle in everybody's life. It's a cycle. Just like that hamster wheel, we'll keep on going in those different cycles. 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 Every time I keep saying cycles, I keep thinking of that song, cycles. That one part that sticks out to me where he says, the devil learns from your mistakes, even if you don't. See, this is what the enemy does. He has a resume. And I know I've said this before, he has a resume on you to where he is studying you. And every mistake that you make, he is writing it down. You might not learn from his mistakes, but he is learning from those mistakes. And and guess what? He, he's putting up a battle strategy against you. He's sending people that act just like that person that harms you against you. He is bringing those bosses against you. He's bringing those crazy drivers that driving around on Texas, driving all crazy against you because he's learning 
from your mistakes. Even though we don't realize it, we don't realize our, our mistakes because we're thinking we're just doing the same old normal thing. But he is writing those things down. And guess what? He's going to keep you going in what? Cycles. 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 Wondering why we just keep going in a 360 motion ain't going nowhere because the enemy is studying us and has us going in cycles. See, this time, we're just going to worship. We want to allow God to break those cycles. In our lives, we might be going through something, even if it's just a little bit. Just listen to the words of this song. Just let it finish it. Because the minister to me, y'all know if everybody heard this song. It doesn't matter what age you are, God can still break those cycles. Just listen. Did I conquer this last year? Tell me what I missed. This is the time to worship God. Cause I feel that it's coming Even if back. You got love right now. You can be interceding on someone else's behalf. You might know a family member that's going through that same cycle. You might know a cousin. You might know your parents that's going through that same cycle. Just begin to intercede on your behalf. Free throws. And when it ends, he wants to make the sequel. Cause if he has another chance, he feels like he can take my joy, my peace, my faith. Here's that part I was talking about. See the devil, he learns from your mistakes, even if you don't. That's how it keeps you inside, cause. Yeah. Sure. 